Wednesday morning after a few repairs on the combine. It's a leaking radiator they got put in yesterday and then shortly after that was back into production. Lost a bearing on a tensioner pulley for the stock chopper on the back, but it's making rounds now. So while we're drying a couple batches, I'm gonna chop some stocks for bedding. And we do have a stock chopper, a four row one, but it is shot. It's not worth fixing. And we don't have that many acres here that we're gonna chop. So we just use a flail chopper. I know it takes a lot longer. You only can do uh, two rows at a time, but it does a better job. Just take the back off so it doesn't have to go through the blower and then just run down the rows. Makes it real nice and fine. So I'll be doing that with the 15 today and then uh, catch a little video of that. the difference from before and after. All the residue after it's uh, the combine goes over it to after it's chopped. And then we'll rake this into windrows, make it into round bales, and it'll get used in the uh, outdoor pens. switched out for the 35B. Felt like it needed a job. It ain't good for much, but it can handle this. Just how long can my back?
it's the end of the day. Repair two things, one breaks. Now there's a bearing out on the dryer. But I gotta be reminded time to time that uh, there's people that watch that aren't familiar or didn't grow up around this stuff and they're kind of curious how it works. I see some comments once in a while. So I'll start by uh, going over this chopper quick. Flail chopper, also commonly referred to as a green chopper. All this thing has in it is a reel that has a bunch of knives on it and driven on the PTO, these spin around pretty fast and they chop up and pick up whatever you're chopping. Today's case was corn stalks. There's usually a door on the back of this that catches all the uh, material. It falls down around the auger and then the auger runs it into the blower where it's chopped a little more and goes up the spout and into a uh, unloading wagon or whatever you're using. Sometimes we green chop with a flatbed and just fork it off. And they say green chopper. That basically means that you're not, you know, how hay is cut and dried so it doesn't get hot when you store it. Green is just that. Think of it as a salad preparation for cattle. You chop it green, whether it's canary grass or sudex, and you feed it green. Just chops it up, blows it in the wagon, you feed it immediately. Okay, I want to do a quick overview of the picker because people were asking how this works. I'm by no means an expert, but I'll uh, give you the ones through the machine. Being that these aren't common anymore, not too many people use them, I don't see them. So first you got two rows here, right? And you've got your snouts or snoots. Leave me a comment, tell me uh, what your family called them. Over here they were snoots, but I know most people call them snouts. Same thing as a combine. As your stalks come in, you have these chains, gathering chains. They grab the stalks, pull them in. And then you see these two rolls here. These are called snapping rolls. The stock rolls in between these. And then you can see those little embossed, or I don't know what to call them. They actually grab the ear, snap it off. They have the set on each side. And then the ears fall into an elevator. And then the elevator pulls them up into the back here, drops them in the top of the husking bed, and then has an auger there that pulls the additional ears back. But if any trash comes in, or if you have a tough stock, sometimes if they're green, the rolls don't snap, you have some trash or residue comes up. I believe that's what this guy does. It pinches it and grabs it and throws the, out the top. And once the ears, get in this roller bed or the husking bed. They have a, a rubber roller and a couple of metal ones here that have some teeth. And what they do is they grab and strip the husk off and then throw it down to the bottom and there's an elevator that moves it out. And you have these little rubber guys, these fingers. They keep pushing stuff along through so you have like a higher volume and I think it keeps the cobs from bouncing up, kind of forces them through. And then once they strip all the rest of the stuff off, it drops in to the elevator. And then that takes it up to the gravity box. But you also got a blower here too that helps clean all the uh, debris off to try to have some cleaner corn. And then on the bottom of the husking bed, you have another elevator or paddles here that pull all the crap, all the loose kernels that get in there and all the other uh, debris. Don't focus. And that's my two cent tour.